Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm out exploring again. Welcome to my little walk. Today, I'm in a border town on the Welsh marches. I'm at Oswestry, and in fact, I'm walking around the old Iron Age hill fort called Old Oswestry. Of course, it wasn't called Old Oswestry when it was constructed somewhere between 800 BC um, to AD 43 was, well, that's when it was mainly used and then thereafter abandoned. It was an old Iron Age hill fort, uh, although probably this area, I think, has been inhabited by Neolithic man prior to that. This hill fort, and the reason I've come here um, at Oswestry, which let me tell you is sort of, a, as I say, a border town between Shropshire and I think Powys in Wales. It's part of the Welsh Marches. And the Welsh Marches is a strip of land. Well, it's an undefined strip that goes north-south on the border. And it can be anything from 20 to 30 miles wide. Marcher town, uh, Oswestry behind me. And this, one of the best preserved hill forts in Britain. It's um, pretty big. Not as big as, I think, Maiden Hill. Is it Maiden Hill Fort? And uh, Sisbury Ring. But it's impressive because it has four concentric rings. Two main big rings that were developed. And you can kind of see the bits of them uh, behind me here, that now overgrown with ferns and stuff. They were built initially using um, the clay soil and then uh, improve with wood um, and boulders and, and in places apparently you can see and I've yet to see them where the boulders uh, still jut out and then later on over four consecutive periods this uh, improvement and defense was um, well improved over this time to become what is an incredible and would have looked as you can see we're above the the countryside here would have been a very impressive hill fort and would have made people think twice about uh, attacking the main section of the hill fort the middle bit as it were um, is over here and it's a uh, it's really now just a, a giant field if you like um, in there would have been the round houses. The, the Iron Age people would have lived in circular houses, probably thatched with a central post in the middle, possibly with um, a hearth where the smoke most likely just seeped through uh, whatever was used as the thatching material, some sort of reeds or ferns or some, some grass of some description. I mean, I'm not an expert. Um, but the round house itself made up of uh, wooden staves and infilled with wattle and daub as the walls and they would have I guess mostly have been farmers they were at that time experimenting with iron and hence iron age so they were smelting the iron and discovering its properties and making all sorts of um, objects out of iron as history is progressing forward during this period and the tribe that were here were uh, the Cornovi tribe. Now I made a video where I climbed up the Recon in Shropshire which is uh, another great big hill um, and the Recon was very much a, a, a high up hill fort. I forget exactly how high it was. It's pretty pretty high down towards Telford um, to into the east, much more into the east, I think, than here, because this is very much on the border. Uh, but they were the Cornovi, and the Cornovi uh, were quite a, a big and main tribe. At that time, sort of 800 years BC, Britain was divided up into different tribal groups um, all over. You had different, different tribes who um, had different ideas and different ways of doing things and 
presumably trading was going on not only with those tribes but also overseas as well now this is a landlocked area but uh, nomadic tribes or nomadic people would have been trading along bringing stuff now where I live in Sussex there is Sisbury Ring which was famed for its flint mines and the flint mines although they were Neolithic flint mines before the Iron Age some of those flints probably were still mined and used and may well have made their way up so I'm just going through a kissing gate here uh, may well have made their way up to um, just forgot where I was then Old Oswestry uh, another little entrance here so um, I believe this must be the eastern entrance going into England and the western entrance which is where I started going in towards Wales and so not north-south as you might imagine um, and of course there's no reason to be north-south unless of course you needed to be let's try and open open the complicated system that is this kissing gate get myself through there we go um, so east and west purely because you're accessing England and Wales and this was very much a, uh, a, se a settlement here that was trying to show dominance and power by the size and the ring structure of these dikes let's see if we can get a better view of them down here uh, let's stand here and point ourselves down here we go you can see some of the the rings below me to really make it a formidable object for any invader coming through this is Wales or just on we're in Shropshire technically but it's sort of on the border of Welsh country and as you can see by the weather it's about to rain any second over here again more of the main living area as I say just a field at the moment we've got uh, the beginnings of Britain behind me um, or rather sorry England England behind me and then the town of Oswestry Street to my left and I just wanted to add that once it was abandoned the hill fort after the Romans arrived although we actually we don't know if the Romans ever attacked it there's no evidence of the Romans actually attacking the hill fort but after it fell into disuse and was abandoned it became part in the, I think the 7th or 8th century part of what's called Watt's Dyke we don't really know who Watt was whether he was a king or or a, a leader but anyway it's called Watt's Dyke which is this big dyke that was dug from round about here to the north of Wales and then later in the 8th century King Offa he dug a dyke um, which delineated delineated um, again a big big trench that went right down to South Wales um, as a barrier and a markation really of England and Wales and, you, and it makes a delightful walk now I should do that as a separate video and then later on if you spin forward I don't know to the First World War it's just under a thousand years about eight nine hundred years up here it was used by the military during the First World War I think the Canadians actually as part of their training and they made small uh, explosions and things which after a while people thought uh, were actually part of the the Iron Age hill fort um, bits but of course it was military stuff for the First World War so an, an added little bit of history there I'm just walking now down in the the V of the ditch and it's very easy to see how uh, tricky it would have been for uh, an imposing uh, tribe to try and attack you've got to get across each of these 
concentric uh, rings and they're just in one of them and of course we've had a thousand years of infill natural infill and vegetation and what have you and, and even now behind me here you can just about see it's still pr pretty steep although I have a sneaky suspicion that uh, the uh, Neolithic and then the Bronze and the Iron Age man was a hell of a lot fitter uh, and more used to clambering over difficult terrains but yeah coming up here you can connect with the earth and get a real idea of of what it must have been like especially especially with the Welsh weather and here I'm walking on one of the the higher of the two um, bank embankments and I guess probably up on that one the one that the hill fort is there would have been the palisade of wooden stems now there's just a little fence um, it's very easy to think here you could stand here with your with your tribal men with their spears or whatever weapons they had to hand thinking I'm the king of the castle you're the dirty rascal rascal and even now there's a farm just below me below down here let's hang on let's get the camera in the right place even below a farm growing crops and it is most likely that that has been going on for millennia down here and then if trouble came people would take cover in the protective embankment and palisade or palisade of the castle anyway if you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe uh, press the bell notification you'll be informed every time I do a video and uh, leave a comment which hill forts have you been to and which ones would you like me to go and visit this one is run by English Heritage it's free to come in it's free to wander around and it looks lovely so until I see you next time goodbye